At Lund University in Sweden. She has several publications in the field of her study and research. Dr. Helmi, welcome to our program. Uh, welcome for you and welcome for all Algerian nations. How do you assess the current Sino Arab relations? Oh, actually, China and the Arab countries enjoy a long history of friendly exchanges. For example, during the Cold War period, significant accomplishments were achieved in their bilateral political cooperation. In recent years, have witnessed the great success of comprehensive cooperation toward mutual benefits within the framework of China-Arab Cooperation Forum. Um, however, mm-hmm. the, uh, while the relationship between China and uh, the Arab world is long-standing, its Chinese prominence on the world stage, in the international stage, yes. with its nuclear capabilities, United Nations Security Council, Council V2 and economic rise to be the second largest world economy. Mm-hmm. So the mutual relationship between China and the Arab world uh, will expect it to be more and more closer in the near future. And actually, Arab perspectives to the rise of China are represented in uh, three perspectives, like the first stage looking for Chinese political support to our uh, issues. Yes. The second stage represented in investment in the Chinese military and political capabilities. In the third stage, it's different interests, cultural interests, and so on. Mm-hmm. Well, Dr. Helmi, how have the Sino-North African countries' economic relations developed? Oh, actually, with the establishment of a Chinese reform and opening up a strategy in the 18-1980, more oriented mm-hmm. toward this economic development, okay. China, China adopted the principle of drawing a line between China and the other countries with a different social system or ideology and instead comprehensive promoted its relations with all countries in the spirit of five principles of peaceful coexistence. Therefore, Sino-Arab relations Mm -hmm. entered a new era of development. Mm -hmm. And actually, I can mention here in January 2004, Chinese ex-Chinese or former Chinese president Hu Jintao yeah. advanced four principles for developing Sino-Arab relations mm-hmm. when meeting Secretary General Amr Musa and the delegates of the 22 uh, member states of the Arab League. Uh, actually, they agreed on to build the China, China or Sino-Arab Cooperation Forum yeah. and a new type of Sino-Arab partnership in June 2006. Yeah. The Mm-hmm. Second ministerial conference of China Arab Cooperation Forum was held in Beijing, mm-hmm. and they discussed in depth discussion on promoting friendship, expanding yes. cooperation, and establishing a new Sino Arab partnership and reached uh, consensus in many fields. Well, Dr. Helmi, is China's strategy in the MENA region the same after the Arab Revolution? Actually, Chinese first reaction towards this, the Arab Spring or Arab uprising was to wait and say. In this brief 
the problem is here focus on how China has moved from a timid position in MENA from yes. a Chinese perspective. They look to Middle East like MENA in Middle East and the North African countries after the Arab changes, Arab revolutions, mm-hmm. to a more active diplomacy. The chapter responds to Chinese perception of immediate risks to its political and commercial interests as well as the safety of uh, its citizens in the Middle East. Moreover, uh, Beijing mm-hmm. felt that it has gained nothing but lost everything in Libya uh, after getting out Gaddafi. In addition, uh, according to Syrian spring was uh, China mm-hmm. a new challenge there to avoid loss of its economic and strategic influence. Problem also yes. focused on how China is reforcing its strategic position in the Mediterranean yeah. at the expense of other external powers such, such as the United States of America and uh, European Union. So here we can mention two. I can identify some new strategies adopted by China to maintain its labor markets in the Middle East uh, and MENA region after the Arab Spring as, for example, number one, a Chinese policy is shaped to a large extent by its view of U.S. policy. What the United States say and doesn't have strong influence on Chinese foreign policy in MENA region. The second, um, in addition to Chinese foreign policy, Chinese decision makers, mm-hmm. Chinese policy toward the, the Syrian uprising is different than that. To mm-hmm. the United States, there are real disagreements between Russia and China. Yes. And the West, the third uh, perspective, Russia mm-hmm. and China feel strongly that the West violated the terms of United Nations Security Council sanctions on Libya by initiating actions that, that never got a solution mm-hmm. to solve the Libyan problem. Moreover, uh, Russia's yes. position is a key factor in Chinese calculations and interests regarding to the Syrian uprising. A Chinese veto was unusual, being only the eighth time China has used its veto power since rejoining the United Nations in 1971. In the eyes of Chinese policymakers, the Assad regime is not worth a veto. To conclude, China seeks to prevent a repetition of Libya events while the West on the uh, on the other world uh, yes. the West would like to to exploit the very laws they were purporting to preserve in the Libyan issues yes uh, well dr Helmi uh, recently a Chinese Arab cooperation forum was held can you tell us about that forum uh, actually the the communique and or the action plan issued by the ministerial conference of the the China Arab Cooperation Forum declared mm-hmm. that both sides, uh, China and the Arab world, had decided to promote a comprehensive cooperation in the fields of politics, economy, science, culture, personal exchanges, and dialogues among civilizations in order to mm-hmm. establish a yes. new Sino Arab partnership. It's the first time for the 22 Arab states as a whole to issue an important political manifesto Mm -hmm. on the development of bilateral relations with China. This is also a strategic option made by both uh, sides to meet the challenge caused by the dramatic changes of global and regional situations after Mm -hmm. the Cold War. The Arab countries and China are facing a new period, Mm -hmm. a new era of social transformation. Mm -hmm. Their main task is to create a peaceful regional and surrounding environment gradually enhance political, economic and social reforms mm-hmm. and realize that they realize that yes. Arab world and China should go stand with each other yes. uh, after the end of Cold War especially following the Iraq where the continuous mm-hmm. problems in the Middle 
East produced a tremendous negative impact on the Arab world and seriously the base of reform and development. So the two both sides, China and the Arab world, decided to cooperate during the China-Arab Cooperation Forum and they discussed to cooperate on different issues like I mentioned before on economic issues, political issues and cultural issues. Well, Dr. Helmi, it seems that China has invested so much on Middle East relations. How have they prepared their human resources? Can we speak here about universities' involvement and think tanks' groups? Yeah, well, um, in the past uh, three decades, Chinese Middle East studies Mm -hmm. have become more and more systematic, which is reflected not only in the great volume of publications, Mm -hmm. numbering it's almost 1,200 publications, Mm -hmm. but also in the varied research methodologies and the increase in Iranian and Middle Eastern academic journals. Yeah. Chinese Middle East studies have gone and increased developing in particular after the Arab Spring revolutions and the political changes in the Middle East, especially from 2010. To 2015, research institutions evolved from state-controlled propaganda offices and multi-dimension academic and non-academic entities, including Mm -hmm. universities, research institutes, military institutions, government offices, overseas embassies, and mass media. Mm -hmm. Publications evolved from providing an introduction to and overview of the Middle East status to in-depth, in-depth and deeply studies of Middle East politics, economy, rough three stages. And we can, and it's very important to mention two, three stages uh, for the increasingly of the Middle Eastern studies in the Chinese universities and think tanks. The beginning mm-hmm. stage, it, it's from 1949 to 1978. Mm-hmm. The second stage, it's growth from 1979 to 1999, uh, mm-hmm. they, uh, they were focused on energy, religion, culture, society, and security. And the final stage focusing on China has established as well as joined various academic NGOs mm-hmm. such as Chinese Middle East Studies Association, the Asian Middle East Studies Association, including China, Japan, and South Korea, mm-hmm. and the Arabic Literature Studies Association. However, Chinese Middle East studies remain backward, both in comparison with Chinese, American, European, and Japanese studies at home, and with the Middle East studies in the West. The establishment of Chinese research and teaching centers entails the combination of social science, sciences and humanities, yes. of general theoretical studies and the study of specific issues of purely academic studies and policy-oriented studies. Yes. However, the, fir- the first decade after the establishment of China from 1949 to 1958, 59 only propaganda offices were active rather than academic institutes for international is- studies in general or the Middle East in particular. But now we are witnessing increasingly in Middle Eastern studies mm-hmm. in Chinese universities, especially after Arab Spring and Arab revolutions, there are tremendous increasingly in the level of Middle Eastern studies and the academic and Chinese scholars who are focusing on the updated changes in the Middle East and the MENA region. Mm. Well, that's very uh, interesting. Uh, How would you describe uh, briefly, uh, Dr. Helmi, the recent Hong Kong demonstrations? Oh, actually, it's Chinese central government has condemned the ongoing street occupations mm. uh, in Hong Kong yes. and the state controlled the mainland Ma- media outlets have accused the pro democracy activists of intensifying uh, the crisis with the latest clash on the mm. Hong Kong business growth that has taken out to clear the protest sites in a joint venture controlled by, by Chinese state-owned civic group. So it remains unclear.
clear whether Beijing had a direct hand in the application, many in the business sector, which is increasingly reliant on China, mm. have opposed the protests since day one on the ground that it would hurt the economy and an unlikely hero of last year's Hong Kong protests demanding for free elections, especially the teenagers, they are over 18 uh, years old, they are asking for more democracy, uh, for free elections. Some people in mainland China might think that there are other parties uh, can uh, can make fund or can fund those uh, protests, those demonstrators in the street. Actually, the election protests were only the latest chapter in a youth is been organizing on Hong Kong's crowded streets, beginning with the demonstrations uh, and actually heavy-handed efforts by the Communist Party leadership to weaken Hong Kong's autonomy that organized mm-hmm. this protest. I can hear mention to uh, one of the mm-hmm. demonstrators, mm-hmm. the teenagers, he said that, uh, that my parents support my stand, but they would not join the protests or go to mm-hmm. demonstrations. My mother, being a mom, gives me a space to join this movement, but she's worried. Yes. Actually, that mm-hmm. means that it's that means, protest, that means... especially for youth people and teenagers, yeah. and the old people are a little bit away of this kind of demonstration. Well, uh, Dr. Helmi, a last question. What will be the challenges and strategies of Arab revolutions on Chinese policies in the Middle East? Actually, I can here conclude the impact on Arab spring in MENA uh, on Chinese policies in the region uh, in the region as follows. The first, the Arab spring and its aftermath present both challenges and opportunities for Chinese foreign policy and the labor markets in the Middle East, the evidence presented in, uh, suggests that China can maximize the Arab Spring event to achieve more economic benefits and strategic advantages. Mm-hmm. The second, Beijing views the revolutions and revolts in MENA countries as a threat to stability, but not as new ground for changing its policy. Uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, thirdly, for, from the beginning of the Arab Spring, Bring, China has uh, insisted in uh, its tendency to follow a weight and say policy. Beijing opts for maintaining a distance from active participation in the org- reorganization of the Middle East. The fourth uh, yes. perspective, moreover, Beijing has been forced to face the rapidly changing developments and make adjustments both to monitor the potential uh, risk at home and to protect its growing commercial interests in the region. Nadia Helmi, uh, you are an assistant professor at the School of Economic Studies and Political Science in Venezuela University, and you are specialized in Chinese politics. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much.